didn't really have any plans to start this business. And I walked in there and I'm like, man, look how much fun these guys are having. I wanted to start a business that I was able to have that much fun at work. That passion for the industry and what we do shows and we just have fun with it. There is a lot of science that goes into it. Daddy makes boots. Hi, I'm Craig Holland. I'm the founder of Stumbletown Distilling. Been operational in Saskatoon for about two and a half years now. A light bulb went off for me as I actually went into Lucky Bastard and I walked in there and they were just having such a good time. They were like pumping Madonna and dancing around and I'm like, man, look how much fun these guys are having. I want this. Didn't know it at the time, but that was my inspiration. It was like, I wanted to start a business that I was able to have that much fun at work. I had a job as a power engineer at a big chemical plant in Saskatoon until one day some suits came in and basically announced they were closing the plant down. I decided that I wanted to maybe take a different path and improve my quality of life, do my own thing and be the master of my own destiny, I guess. At that same time, I'd been to a lot of distilleries and breweries around Western Canada and I always noticed how much fun they were having. I became more inspired to become part of it. Yeah, so I'm Matt Chevry. I'm the distiller here at Stumbletown. Uh, pretty new. Uh, I've been a brewer for the last, well, it's going on seven years now. I saw the passion that they have, and I have the same passion. Matt and I were friends before we were co-workers, and he was, he was here helping me out as a buddy. And he's a pretty technical guy. He's got a lot of great experience working in breweries. On a weekly basis, um, we'll be doing anything from bottling, packaging, um, deliveries, um, bringing in ingredients, uh, testing, so proofing stuff. Like, I'm really excited about the whiskey. We're running tests on that because that's going to be coming out right away. Distilling happens probably about once a month, I'd say. He'll always be a top notch brewer, and now I feel like it's a great opportunity for him to challenge himself and take on some distilling. So I think whiskey is going to be a big thing for him. Up until about a year, a little over a year ago, um, Kaylin and I were mostly running every shift in this bar. It was fun, we got to meet a lot of great people, but I honestly couldn't do it anymore. There came a time when we needed a bar manager, so. Curtis's uh, resume came across our plate. He was a super passionate guy, very creative. He was a perfect fit for this place. Hi, my name is Curtis Kelly, and I'm the bartender here at Stumbletown. My main job at Stumbletown uh, would be a basic bartender job to attend the bar, I'd make the drinks, and responsible for pretty much everything that the bar has to do to ensure that guests come in and enjoy their drinks and have a good time. We gave him the freedom to make this bar his own and he keeps changing up the menu and doing things to put his own spin on it. We're a great team here, pretty small group, but I'm trying to create a culture that we're all valued on more than one level. I took a master distiller's course actually out in Kelowna. That was the next step for me. I didn't have any experience distilling or brewing prior to this place. So we decided to go for it to save some money. We decided to do a lot of the work ourselves. It was around that time when everything got approved that my brother Kalen came home from BC. He came home and he'd seen that I'd probably bitten off a little more than I could chew. So he stuck around and, um, and helped me out, worked for free, hung drywall, painted, whatever I needed him to do. He kind of made it known that he was interested in learning more about spear production and I could tell he was like passionate about it. He kept asking about making whiskey and stuff like that. I always envisioned myself as the guy coming up with all the recipes and doing all that stuff. When it came time to start making product, he was right in there. He's passionate about it, he's a super creative guy, so he was killing it, so he became the guy who was in charge of all the production. So we take grains, um, so malted barley, 
or we've, we've got local quinoa in some of our whiskies, we've got local lentils, um, so all different types of grain that you can unlock sugars from corn. Um, so then the first thing that you do is called a, a mash. You mix it with warm water um, to try and hit a certain point. So that's, that's really what you're doing, you're converting starches into sugars. Because later on, when you pitch your yeast, yeast eats the sugars and it creates the alcohol, CO2, and esters, right? So your esters are your subtle flavor and um, aroma compounds that, that will come out later on in the distillation and in the aging process. Pass it over and we go into our big pot still, which is sitting right behind me. And that's where we do the first distillation. So we, we bring it up to a boil and that's where your vapors are going through your column and condensing and coming back down as alcohol. And your water is returning back into your mash until you're trying to extract as much alcohol as you can and leave back as much water as you can. So we have our whiskey column, which just has um, six plates. So when it passes through a plate, it's kind of like clarifying it each time. So the more plates you activate, the cleaner a product you'll get. The column next to it is the, the vodka column. So that has 16 columns. So the first amount of uh, alcohol that comes off, the vapor that comes off, is actually poisonous, right? So those are called your heads. And then once you start getting into your good alcohol, that's called your hearts. And then later on, you get into the tails, which is the tail end of it, which you're getting undesirable flavors from the grain because it's been boiling for so long. Something like the heads we can actually use recently because of COVID for hand sanitizer. And then we've got our gin basket just over there. Um, and that's adding botanicals into it, um, letting it sit in the alcohol and then rising through the gin basket. And that's stripping off all your oils and terpenes and stuff like that in whatever botanicals you put in. Gin is the easiest spirit to get creative with. So to create gin, you need juniper. Once you have juniper in there, you can pretty much do whatever you want. So I think it's important to keep to the, to the traditions in gin and make it taste like gin. Yeah, so we're just getting our botanicals ready for our pink gin uh, that we're gonna be doing three runs of. So weigh it all out and then it'll go into the, uh, the gin basket and we'll start distilling tomorrow. The Pink IPA next door at High Key. Um, it's an IPA featuring a hop called Vic Secret from uh, New Zealand. Very fruity, like tropical fruits and citrus fruits. Um, and then they added uh, hibiscus tea in the bright tank to make it pink um, and give it a bit of tartness and floral aspect. So you take a traditional gin or what other people have done, you put a twist on it, right? You put your own twist. But then something very unique like the, the Pink IPA gin came from me meeting Craig, so a brewer from next door meeting a distiller, and he really liking that beer, and he came to me saying, would we be able to put something like that into a gin? And I said, absolutely. We planned on doing it one batch as a small batch, and it sold like crazy, and the demand was there, but um, one of the benefits from making it is we give a dollar from every bottle sold to the Canadian Cancer Society. It's a fantastic product. It, it's pink, so it catches people's eyes. It's a lot of fun to make, and it's just a cool kind of little collaboration with the, the brewery right next door. Supporting local is one of the biggest things to us. We rely 100% on local support, so we gotta walk the walk, and we use everything we can as close to home. These rose hips, do you know exactly where they were picked? So that's the- Northern Boreal, Saskatchewan. Yeah, Northern yeah. Saskatchewan, Boreal Heartland. Everything else is uh, the distillers playing around with flavors that To define that they want. it as gin, it has yeah. to have juniper. Traditionally, coriander, citrus, some other stuff that's typically in gin, but not a requirement. I'm inspired by two things, mostly, I think. One would be the season. So right now, middle of summer, we get inspired by fresh, bright flavors. There's lots of different ways to make gin. Some, some distilleries will vapor, will put all their botanicals right into a gin basket and let, let all the flavor come from vapor passing through it. Some places will do it all in the pot itself, which is the majority of ours goes into the pot. Obviously, we've got a lot of botanicals. We need a pretty big gin basket. Probably takes about a couple hours to, to get it all ready and then for this particular gin, there's a post infusion, so there's uh, some other botanicals and stuff that goes in after the fact that turns it pink and gives it some additional flavor. 
Pia comes around and eats them. She loves the dehydrated strawberries. We gotta get them in the gin before she shows up. Anything we can get right in Saskatoon, we often do. If not, we'll try to get it from Saskatchewan. If we can't get it in Saskatchewan, we'll try to keep it within Canada. But when it comes to malts and a lot of the raw materials that go into our products especially, there's no better place on earth than to get grain than in Saskatchewan. So I think that's a huge advantage for us is we can get all that. Um, so one of the, the big suppliers that we work with is Maker's Malts. We really like to support local. Um, he's actually one of my really good friends, Stephen Meyer. How's it going, man? Hey, great. Very good to hear from you. Um, I'm gonna get Matt to make some lentil whiskey uh, sometime in the next couple weeks here, and I was gonna get you to check some stock for me. We need 18 bags of premium pale, 18 bags of Munich. Let me know if you can stop by. We should be here. I'll give you a show when I'm heading in. And Sounds good, man. Yeah, I'm super excited about the whiskey. We've been trying it for the last couple months, and I think it's the most unique whiskey to come out of Saskatchewan right now. So they, they've been taking a page out of uh, the recent craft distillers, really kind of going against the grain and putting some different um, ingredients into it. So the quinoa whiskey is my favorite right now. So the quinoa really comes through as a really unique flavor, um, almost like a granola bar. And then there's chocolate malt. So we're just proofing some of our quinoa whiskey straight out of the barrel. And I'm gonna check the specific gravity of it with a hydrometer just to see kind of eyeball where we're at. So we need to take the gravity plus the temperature and with a volumetric tape, it'll tell us where we're at. It's very unique. I honestly, I've never had anything like it. I'm a huge whiskey guy. And I think, I think it's gonna do really, really well. But I love this one as opposed to the, I love the quinoa too. That's got that chocolate. This has a lot of, totally different, but like fruity. Yeah, the more it evaporates, it's gonna, it's gonna change as we lose more product, but um, flavors will develop. So in the barrel aging process, it's, it's as much as an art as it is a science. The lentil was a lot of work. The very first batch, we actually, my brother and my dad, my mom, and my sister, everybody but me, cleaned the grain by hand with some screens and like got it from a, a local farmer. I honestly haven't found anybody that's ever made a lentil whiskey before, so I didn't really know what to expect. Thea, <laughs> how you doing? <laughs> Are you excited? Do you want to go weigh out some stuff? Help me, help me out? Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Let's go. My daughter Thea, is obviously very important to me. She's a big part of my life. She's a six-year-old girl. Her interests change every day, but she always loves coming here, and I always want to make it a place that she enjoys being, like... 2.5. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We'll come here on a day off to do a couple things, get a couple, a little bit of office work done, and maybe we'll make some lemonade or something like that. And, <laughs> and she's always very interested. They're called rose hips. Cool. Yeah. There, good. What's the best part about these strawberries, Thea? They're tasty. Yeah, sometimes when we're uh, dehydrating fruit for the bar or even for the gin, she gets in there and, and starts eating my strawberries and stuff like that, so. <laughs> I don't think these need to go into the gin, do they? No? So with Thea, she knows that I work in a distillery and she knows that we make perfect. Um, spirits, <laughs> booze as she puts it sometimes, and she knows that it's an adult beverage. She's excited to see that I'm making something that's available to the end consumer. I like Summertown because my daddy works here. As far as I'm concerned, like I like teaching her the spirit of entrepreneurship. I can make kids cocktails, because I'm not allowed to make alcohol. I would name a cocktail Prairie Flamingo lemonade. It's going to be pink and yellow. One of the nice things about having a hospitality suite as opposed to a tavern permit or a regular bar is we are allowed to have kids in here. It's not just an adult space. I, I see it as a family space, especially the patio and stuff. People want to come out and hang out and bring their dog, their kids, whatever. It's great. Yeah, so still running at 90. Temperature seems good. What are you getting Taste in there? Tastes really good. 
citrus. Lots of citrus. Yeah. Grapefruit, that's really popping right now. Strawberry, all the orange, juniper. We're looking at how much action we have in the column here. So we're controlling the deflagmator with a, just, just a water valve, just a butterfly valve. So I'm looking at the temperature of that, and then the top of the temperature of the column coming through, and then the condenser right here. We don't want to run it too hot. Oils will attach themselves to vapors at different points in the distillation, so yeah. the distiller decides when you start cutting into tails, like at what point do you, do you feel the taste is changing to something un, undesirable. Yeah. So I'm just dumping the uh, first bucket around 20 liters from our gin distillation. We'll do this about three times, so we'll end up with roughly 300 liters that then we need to proof up to roughly 500 liters. Hey, Craig, how you doing? Hey, buddy, how's it going? Good, good to see you, man. You too. I'm here with your mouth delivery. Sweet, get Matt making some whiskey. So I can play some music tomorrow night. Two of you coming, 8.30ish? Yeah, yeah, I've got my buddy coming to play some bass. Nice. So, so this weekend, we're having some live entertainment, which is something we haven't done much of, but we want to get more into. So we're having a bit of a celebration now that restrictions are lifted. We're going to have Deadly Dan out there with a hot dog cart. Hopefully get some music in here every week. Hope, see how it goes, but yeah. 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 Tomorrow night should be good traffic. We've got the radio station coming down in the afternoon. And Sweet. Right on, man. Well, thanks for dropping that off. I'll no see problem. you tomorrow night. Looking forward to it. Yeah, man. Looking forward to it. Sounds good, buddy. Any successful craft producer in Saskatchewan, in my opinion, realizes in a hurry that your best allies are, are the other producers, and, and it's important to have good relationships with all those guys. So my brother and I, Kalen and I, decided to do with a unique malt uh, from Makers called Honey Bee. And we decided that we're gonna age that one for about 13 years, which will be when my daughter turns 18. Right now we call it college whiskey. The idea behind it is that barrel of whiskey will hopefully pay for a college fund. And uh, it was fun because we got some, we got her in here and helped let her help us dump a little bit of grain into the into the mash tun and it'll be a pretty small batch but it'll be uh, it'll be the only one we make like that probably in uh, the lifetime of this distillery. A lot of the spirits we make are inspired by cocktails so rather than just making vodka and gin we want to show people how to get creative with those spirits and a way to do that is a hospitality suite like this. We also I wanted to be uh, involved with people, customers. I wanted to have that interaction. When I'm looking at a drink, I usually am looking at my main profile. So the size of the drink. Do I want it to be a tall drink? Do I want it to be kind of a more sour style, like margarita, um, or that really spirit forward drink, that old fashioned style. So I'm looking more at like the whole concept at first, and then I'll start to pick an ingredient I want to focus. I got a new cocktail I wanted you to try out. I want to put it on special this week. Uh, it's a twist on kind of the neoclassic cocktail, the Jungle Bird, which is kind of a sour tiki style cocktail. Uh, features heavy molasses from a dark rum, uh, pineapple juice, campari, and uh, nut orgeat. But we don't make any of that. We only use Saskatchewan products in this bar, so instead of the dark rum, I decided to go with a demerara syrup and our vodka. Um, to bring up the pineapple flavor, I went for that ditch weed that we love, that wild chamomile that has that really nice pineapple aroma. And then instead of the Campari, I'm going to use our sweet vermouth. In terms of how you balance a drink, that just came through experience. So a lot of it is based off recipes I saw online, and I learned kind of the, the balance of their, their acidity, their sweetness, the, the different kind of dryness of drinks. Um, whenever I try a new recipe, I found myself constantly kind of going back to the, the, the basic bare bones, the drinks that were the tried and true recipes, if you will. Um, so I'd been out seeing what all the world had to offer, and I kind of started reading about like local things and ingredients that people forget about. Um, and like, there's so much in Saskatchewan that people just don't think of as food. So I became really into kind of foraging culture. Um, so things like oak acorns and spruce tips and dandelions with the flower and the root and Saskatoon berries. And we had so much flavor that in Saskatchewan that I was out chasing all these exotic fruits and these crazy spirits and never or realized that I should come back home and kind of start exploring that a little bit more. This is the, the ditch weed vodka we got here, that wild chamomile. Grows in all the cracks and sidewalks. 
some house made rhubarb vermouth. Really emphasis on the bitter notes. Bittered with wormwood. Uh, actually has rhubarb as well. Very floral, very citrusy. Uh, so we use prairie bees mead for the base of this vermouth. Um, bring some more tropical notes. There's always that balance that you're looking for of like the dryness, which when I say dryness, I mean alcohol percentage, and that balances out with water usually, um, and the sweet and sour is a big one, but then I'm more looking for a flavor, so do I want a nutty component in the drink? Do I want a floral component in the drink? Um, it's not an exact science, and every person's different, so it depends who I'm making the drink for. Whenever we do a mixology class or something like that, Curtis, talks a lot about the importance of balancing the cocktail and, and the ratios to use to check to achieve that, so. You can't tell people what they like to taste. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's the money shot. See how much I spill. I'll bring those aromatics up. So we got the wild mint sprig. They're not wild, this is mint from my garden, but some not quite whiskey cherries. So this is my twist on the classic jungle bird. This is the prairie bird. Yeah. No, I think it's good. Yeah. Do a special for this week? Yeah. Nice. Put that, on, put that on feature. Made a nice little chalkboard sign for it as well. So Stumbletown, to me, this place was always a destination. Some place that you'd bring your friends and family. But the Stumble, I guess, was a playful way to allude that we're a distillery without promoting stumbling. Uh, this is just a gravity head filler. So uh, pump pumps it into the top reservoir out of the tank. It goes through a filter. When you push them up, they, a valve retracts and it just fills them up to the right level. 750 mil. We recently rebranded our products and um, the biggest difference I guess is in the gin. It's got a small front label and then a two-sided back label. We're pretty impressed with the way it turned out. When we were looking for a logo, one thing I realized is like I kind of like animals. The stumbliest animal that's local that we could think of was a moose. So we had a moose, but it just wasn't quite weird enough. So we put a guy up on there riding a moose. So the stars and the circles incorporate the skies that we have here. The subtle step down in our, in our logo, like the actual word Stumbletown is another one that not a lot of people notice, but like I'm a big fan of the subtle branding. Yeah, so uh, the moose you can see against the Coliseum and, and we just wanted something as a background. So Craig Wilson, the designer, uh, came up with this for the, uh, the Caesar gin. And then for some of our other ones, like our original gin, it's a, it's a purple moon in the background. And so we kind of went a bit kind of cosmic space themes. People are loyal to the industry. So I find people that come in here are people who love craft beer, love craft spirits, want to support local. Um, having a hospitality suite allows us to meet people, tell our story, do tours, do tastings. We got some customers in here now, and they came for our most popular item, which is our gin flight that we're going to make up here. Uh, basically, it's uh, kind of four cocktails with four different gins uh, in kind of a highball style to highlight the flavors of each of the gin. Start off with the gin. This is the original gin. This is the Caesar gin. So these are the sea buckthorn berries. All right, guys, here is our gin flight. So I'll walk you through what each of these options are. So starting off on your left is obviously our Caesar. So the gin itself is basically a pre-spiced Caesar. All the spices you taste uh, were put into the pot still itself. So things like garlic, onion, cherry tomatoes, we threw Worcestershire in there. We threw bacon into the still itself. So uh, it comes through as a clear spirit. You just mix it with Clamato, it makes a really good Caesar. For extra garnishes, I really like over the top presentation. I think a beautiful drink in a beautiful setting is always gonna taste better. Um, the next one is our original gin recipe, so that is our oldest gin. Uh, I personally find it a very like woodsy, kind of Saskatchewan-esque gin. Um, the next one right here is our newest gin recipe. Uh, it's actually a gin-based liqueur called Saskatoon Slow Gin. Uh, last one we got here is the pink IPA gin on the far right there. Uh, it was inspired by a beer they brew next door at High Key. Uh, so it uh, has a beautiful pink color from the hibiscus flower and it's a very lightly hopped gin. 
I got really good relationships with the other distilleries, especially the ones within the city. LB and Black Fox are, are uh, big mentors for me. I, I look up to those guys and I got a really good relationship with them. So keep it fun, keep things new. We're always looking for new products that we can put out there that's new and interesting, like the Slow Gin we just released. No one's released one of those in Saskatchewan yet and it's been flying. Stumbletown is an oasis of creative local flavor. Let's put our own spin on it. There's so many ways to get creative with that stuff. That's the nice part about having a business like this. There's not many places where you have 100% creative freedom. restaurant or beverage producer you'd like to see featured on Max TV Local? Email us at max.local at sastel.com.